Hi everyone, welcome to Think Smart Home. If you have seen my previous videos, you might have noticed that I am a big fan of Synology DSM. Synology DSM is a powerful NAS operating system with tons of features and applications. It can be one of your only server for home lab and the main brain of your smart home. It covers each aspect of a true smart home, starting from feature-rich and scalable apps all the way to secure and smart storage. If you want to know more about DSM, I'll leave the link to their website down in the description below. A disclaimer here, even though I have created few tutorials on this, but I don't recommend using this as your production server or hosting a critical data on it. This is good only for lab and test environment or a local backup server or if you want to run some containers on it maybe. I personally use it to run few containers on it for my smart home but those containers are being backed up on my main gen on Synology NAS locally and then the entire system is being backed up off-site on Synology C2 server. So I will not lose anything if this server crashes. Also, please be advised that since it is not official Synology hardware, so you will not get any support from Synology in case you encounter any problem. But of course, you may request for support using the developer discord channel. I will leave the link to discord forum down in the description below. Back to the video. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can install Synology DSM on your PC. It should work on most of your PCs. I did create this tutorial a couple of months ago and you guys seem to be enjoying it a lot. I have seen lots of comments regarding Quick Connect and the advanced media extensions which are not working. I personally don't use this but I thought to create another tutorial from scratch to cover these. In addition to complete setup, I will show you how to enable Quick Connect and advanced media extensions and get the codec pack installed on your Synology NAS. So make sure to stick till the end and hit the subscribe button whenever you get a chance. Just to let you all know, this is totally the GUI based tutorial and no command line interface is involved. So most users with basic knowledge of computer and networking should be able to get it working unless you end up on a major compatibility issues. Finger crossed guys and best of luck. So what do we need? We'll need to download and configure the ARC loader from GitHub repo. Of course, I want to mention the developer here. Christian has done awesome work on the loader over the years. I highly recommend you support him through his GitHub page or through his website so that he can keep this super great project active and alive. Keep buying him coffees guys. I have left the link to his GitHub page and the website down in the description below just in case if you want to donate him or buy him a coffee. Then we need to download a utility called Rofus. I'll leave the download link in the description below. Just on a side note, you might have noticed I don't have ads when I browse Rofus.ie website. This is because I have set up an ad blocker locally for my entire network. I have created a video on this. I'll leave the link to that video down in the description below if you want to watch that later. Alright, let's get started. Go to ARC Loader GitHub page to download the loader. Please notice the second line, ARC patch description key can be found in my Discord server. This is coming from the developer. This is important to enable Quick Connect. We'll discuss this later in the video. To download the loader, you can select the file format which suits your setup. Since I am going to install DSM on a bare metal, so I will select an image file. There are other options as well. If you want to run the DSM as a virtual machine under VMware or Hyper-V. I have already downloaded this file, so I will use that to flash it on my USB stick using Rofus. To burn the image, just plug in your USB stick to your PC and run the Rofus utility as an admin. Browse the path to the loader and leave everything as default and then click start. It will give you a warning that all data on the USB stick will be destroyed. Click OK. Rufus will start flashing the USB stick. While waiting for this, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. Alright, so now the format is complete. 
click close and remove the USB stick from the computer. Plug this USB into your PC which you want to use as Synergy NAS and boot it using the USB drive. In my case, I have plugged in the USB drive to my old HP Z800 workstation and I have adjusted the boot sequence setting to boot from USB. We don't need to do anything in here. Loader will boot up into setup menu. You should see an IP address assigned to your PC when it completes the boot. Please take a note of the IP address. We will use this to build the loader. Please be advised, the network connection should be wired as the wireless connection is not yet supported. Let the builder do his things until you see a ARC loader menu. We can access the same menu from another PC which is connected to the same network. To do that, just browse the IP address which was displayed on the screen when the loader booted up followed by the port 7681. Now here the first option is to decrypt ARC patch. This is critical if you want to use Quick Connect and advanced media extensions. To decrypt the patch, you will need the patch key from developers discord community channel. If you don't want to use Quick Connect, you can skip this discord channel step. You will need to sign up for a free discord account if you do not have one already. Once you have done that, click on the link and accept the invite to join the community. I'll leave the link to Christian's Discord channel down in the description below. Then click on the drop down menu next to the channel name and select linked role. You need to link your YouTube or GitHub account to get access to the key. The developer of this loader Christian has added these checks as some user started to sell the key online. So once you get access to the key, make sure you don't share it with anyone or else you might be banned from the channel. Once your account is linked, you are an ARC verified member. You should have access to a protected section called a patch key. In there, you should be able to see the patch keys against each version. So you should use the key for ARC version you are using. I have blurred all the keys so that these are not leaked out. This has been specifically mentioned by Christian so we need to support him and follow his instructions since we are just getting benefit of his hard work. Alright, since we have access to the key, now we can go back to ARC Loader Setup Wizard again. Make sure your PC has the internet access as the internet access is required to complete the process. Select option 0, Decrypt ARC Patch. Look at the ARC version description key is required for and enter the key. In my case, is 27.07.18, so I'll enter the key for this version. Once the key is accepted, a confirmation message will show up. Click OK and now we need to select the DSM model. I'll select RS4021 Access Plus since I have used this one already and this is quite compatible with my hardware. You can select any model suits your need. Select show all if you need to see more options for the models. Next, choose the DSM version. I'll select 7.2. For ARC patch, since we have already entered the key on the first step, so we have the license to use it. Select option to use ARC patch to get quick connect push notifications and advanced media extension working. For CPU frequency scaling, I'll go by recommended option, on demand, which makes more sense to me rather than fixing to a specific setting. Then you can select the loader add-on you want to use. I'll leave the loader wiki page down in the description below if you want to understand more about add-ons. Just a side note, do select AME patch if you want to use advanced media extension for your media server. Click OK. Confirm the add-ons you have selected and click OK again. Once you are happy with the selection, choose option 1. If you want to go back and make changes, then choose option 2. I select option 1. A config summary will be displayed. Click OK. Give it some time until you see a confirmation and it says build done. 
boot the system now. Hit enter and this will reboot the system. Since my PC is sitting in my server cabinet and I don't want to go and look at the status, I'll simply ping the IP address of my PC to check the status. Once I start getting the response back, I can simply access the DSM by using the IP address followed by the DSM port, which is the default one. You can also use find.sunlg.com if you want to access your DSM and you don't know the IP address. You should be seeing this Synology DSM ready for installation since I have selected RS4021XS Plus so I can see that. It might be different in your case depending upon what model did you select while building the loader. Click on install. Select to automatically download the DSM from Synology server. System will give you a warning that all data on your drive will be erased. Check the box to confirm and click continue. It will ask you to type model number in there for the confirmation to delete data from your drives. Once you do that, it will download the latest DSM from Synology server and it will install it on your PC. This might take some time. While this is happening, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video about smart home automation, storage and network security. Now the DSM installation is complete, so it's just simply rebooting the PC. As soon as the reboot completes, you should see Welcome to DSM 7 by 2 message. Click on Start. This is the first time you are setting it up, so you have to create an account. Give your NAS a name, I'll call it test NAS. Enter the admin name and then the password. Then click next. Now on this page, you need to select an option for update. Since this load is purely for DSM 7.2, so in next update of DSM, it might stop working. So to avoid that, I suggest selecting the third option to avoid any accidental DSM update which might not be supported by the loader. You can safely update the DSM after updating your loader if the supported loader version is released for the subject DSM version. Click next. Skip the Synology sign up for now. We'll come back to this later in this video. You can leave the device and let take options unchecked and then click submit. It might take some time for the setup to complete. Once that's done, you should have access to your NAS. If you're forced on HTTPS 5001 port, you might get connection not secure warning. Just ignore this for now and then log into your DSM. You should see Synology drive setup options. I'll skip it for now and you can set it up later if you want. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to create a video on how to set up Synology Drive. I'll skip two-factor authentication for now, but I highly recommend setting it up if you are going to expose your NAS over the internet. You should create a storage pool and volume before you can start installing any packages. So I'll quickly create one. One recommendation while you are creating a volume. I highly recommend using BTRFS file system every time you create a volume. It has many advanced features, for example, hosting VMs and snapshots. Alright, it's time for the magic now. Let's try to set up Quick Connect. Quick Connect is the quickest and a very secure way to access your NAS over the internet. Click on Control Panel and then External Access. Enable Quick Connect. You should have a Synology account for this to work. Please create one if you don't have one already. Sign in with your Synology account and choose a Quick Connect ID. Hit apply and you should see the Quick Connect URL. Click on the URL and you should see the login page for NAS which is coming over the internet. And you can also confirm that connection is secure. Let's log in to the NAS using the same admin details which we created earlier. There you go, Quick Connect is working and your NAS is now accessible over the internet. 
Please make sure you harden the security of your NAS. I have created a video on how to secure your Synology NAS. I'll leave the link to that video down in the description below. Next one, I have been asked tons of questions about advanced media extensions in my previous videos. Let's have a look at that now since our quick connect is working. Go to package center and search for advanced media extension package and download it. Once the download is complete, open the package. You might have to log in with your Synology account again to get the latest codec pack. Since we already did that, so it's all up to date and working. Similarly, you should be able to use any other packages which require Synology account. For example, Active Backup for Business. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.